and it, and then I don't see anything coming up. I'm supposed to see the the windows that right, I right exactly. When you click on it, you should see the windows. I see, so you don't see right. them. I I somehow don't see it. Um, Mm -hmm. See, we don't uh, with Teams. We don't need to. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Benson has joined us. Hi. Hi, Dr. Um, Benson. Hello, oh, hi. Hi. hi, President Benson. Hi, nice meeting you. Yeah, nice great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you again. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I uh, I'm trying to figure out the 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 screen sharing. Because the, this is new to me. Yeah. I've been using Zoom. Um, so, so I see that Norma has joined. She's the organizer. Norma, can you try and see if you can make that a presenter? She's showing us a guest now. Can you try to make her a presenter? Why am I a guest? Um, do I need to? Um, so you, sorry, I ask you. So you don't see this uh, the kind of air box with the arrow? I, I see it, but but then when I click it, nothing uh, shows up on uh, at the bottom. No, it's um, going to be showing right under underneath it. Uh, so if I share my screen, maybe you, you can see what you're supposed to see. Uh, so I don't know which screen I shared, but you know, can you see that this share button? So when you share on it, it should be like open a uh, like tiny window and then tell you like which windows you're trying to share. So either is your what you know your app that you want to share like a uh, like an Excel sheet, whatever you want to share your PowerPoint or there's a particular window you want to share. Yeah, I somehow I don't I don't see any of the windows popping up. Um, OK, that's a strange. I don't know. <laughs> Um, she should be made a participant. She's not a participant. She shows us a guest, and I think that's why she cannot uh, she cannot share. Guest, I think, cannot share. So the well, organizer. Well, we can give them control, but then I don't see that as, as well. So I, you know, I I can't give her the control but, either. Yes, because I think the organizer should make her, which is Norma. Um, she set well, up the meeting and Norma, is Norma here? I've seen her before. Hmm. Um, I don't know why when I was a presenter. Hmm. So, so maybe someone else can advance the slides. Yeah. 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 Let, let me. Let me. Um. Who, who would want to advance the slide? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm sure that Meha can do that if if gets, she gets the presentation. She. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me screen. let me send my slides That'll to you. Great. Yeah. If you can send it to me in a you know I don't know if you want to email me. Uh, I'm gonna put this here. My email address. So. I so I have your email. In, address. in the meantime. Um, okay. Perfect. Will you figure this out? I would like to to talk to our president Benson and just apologize for the mix up. I mean, he <laughs> had to see firsthand. <laughs> the mix it's quite right. In the right. CS. For for a computer <laughs> science department. <isn't> yeah. it? <laughs> it happens sometimes. <laughs> We, we neglect to look at the little things, uh, but uh, I mean, Dick, thank you very much for joining. We we greatly appreciate it. So usually these uh, these meetings are very smooth. Most of the times we have them face to face uh, in a room, so it's it's much easier to handle the technology. Um, generally, these uh, team meetings they work well. Uh, it seems that uh, th this time. Uh, I think that's what's happening here. The guest should have been made a presenter when this was uh, was set up, and are it didn't you, happen. Are you the Norma, uh, right now. Oh. Pardon? Norma, it's probably not uh, not present uh, on the meeting, so that's why she cannot do it. But at least, uh, if Meha, if you got the slides, you should be able to share yeah, your screen and advance. Yeah, yeah the, the slides is it's uh, is sending. It's um. Uh, pretty big. 
Um, and, and I will say that we are going to be in actually a very good situation because this way we can see the slides, but we can also see the speaker. <laughs> because when the speaker shows the screen, you can see the slides, but you don't see the speaker anymore. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a quick question. Did you install the app, like uh, the, the team? Or you yeah. Just... Okay. I, I, I installed the app. Um, it's just a net, you know, uh, automatically. Um, I can also try um, logging in the... Um, let me... Let me try to log in again. But it's sending, sending yeah, the swap. I get my email. I mean, I, I, I'm checking my emails. Nothing is yet received. So yeah, I, I'm calling Noma. I, I got a cell. I think the only sensible thing is to yeah. invite Daphne back to Dallas at a later date so we can do this in person. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. We always prefer in-person visits and these kind of talks. I mean, they are better. The... She's not even. She's not answering a phone now. Or we do. Yeah, I understand, but if Meha gets the slides, she can. Okay. And the presentation. So Mera, do you have the slides? Uh, and it's, 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 already, okay, right? the slide is the slide is uh, um, then. Okay, so I, have to, okay. I, I just said it. Just, I just said We are all speaking, including President Benson, but Daphne can, Professor Yao cannot share her slides because she's a guest. She's not, so she's not the, she has to be made the host. So all of us are trying to reach you. So I hope you get this message yeah. and that you can. The guess otherwise yeah. uh, to use the slides. Thank you. Um, Thanks. And then I like. Should I, should I try oh. log off Thanks. and then come back on again? Um, let me try. Let me just quickly. Yes, uh, I think that also none of us received the uh, the slides. So. I just I just got it. I'm I'm trying to share it now. Okay, it, it came to now. I see now too. Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm sharing it now. Okay, she's not. Is that everyone can see it now? Yes. Yes, okay. and uh, we have, you know, already 31, and we have a very distinguished uh, guest today, Dr. Benson, uh, President Benson. And this is the first time I think President Benson has joined the Grace lecture, I believe. And then I'm sorry we have got all these problems. You know, you might think, oh, computer science department, what on earth are they doing? But I got to tell you, it's a very, very uh, efficiently run department. It's just that uh, this, you know, sometimes unexpected things happen. So it's just one of those days, uh, Dr. Benson. No problem. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So, uh, Ovidu, right. should we start now or? Yeah. Yes, uh, Daphne is back, so Bhavani, you can go ahead uh, and yeah, do Yeah, because Daphne is so important. I've got my desktop and my laptop with two different internets. My personal uh, one, you know, the 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 wi two Wi-Fi's I've got. So just in case, so I'm using my <laughs> laptop right now. <laughs> so I usually don't do this. So anyway, uh, welcome everyone uh, for our Grace lecture. This is the second one this year and uh, we are very, very honored and pleased to invite uh, uh, Professor Daphne Yao to speak and she's here with us uh, virtually and we are also very honored to have a very special guest uh, uh, here who is uh, our President Benson, uh, who is president of UT Dallas and he has spoken very highly of Daphne, so we invited him also for the Grace Lecture. So Daphne and I go back uh, quite a while and uh, we've organized some activities together. So you all were able to hear me before, right? Yes, no, okay. I did. So yeah, I suddenly got muted. So uh, Daphne and I go back, we organized, uh, Daphne is the one who founded the ACMW, uh, Cyber W, Women in Cybersecurity Research. And so she then invited invited me to co-organize with her. And we also do the iMentor, which she founded. But then I also want to 
talk about her technical. She's really brilliant technically, and she's uh, research is simply outstanding. Uh, she got a master's at Princeton. Uh, I believe her undergraduate was at Tsinghua, master's at Princeton, and her PhD at Brown University. So I first met Daphne when she was a PhD student. I was at NSF uh, in 2004, I believe. I went to give a keynote address, and Daphne was at ACM SACMAT. And she said that was like one of the first conferences. It was at IBM Almaden. And so since then, we have, you know, had off and on, you know, discussions. But for the last six, seven years, we've been very close and we work closely on a number of things. And Daphne is really outstanding in her research in malware analysis, a number of areas. And so uh, she will talk about some of her research. But um, also, she got the NSF career, the Army YIP Young, Young Investigator Program and several other awards. And she also recently received the ACM CODASPI, that is the Data and Application Security and Privacy, part of C ACM SIGSAC, their lasting research award for her early work, which has been quoted numerous citations and quoted several times, and she also has many more awards. So I won't sort of take too much into her time, but one particular aspect that she talks about uh, how about the in imposter syndrome that many people, especially women, face? And so she's going to talk about her research as well as combine it with her imposter syndrome. She wrote an article in the communications of the ACM uh, about some of the issues and challenges. So since this is a grace lecture, I felt that it was really uh, appropriate and, and it will also motivate all of us to hear from Daphne how she overcame it and how she has been able to produce brilliant research. And so Daphne, thank you very much and we welcome you for our grace lecture. Well, thank you so much, Bhavani. Um, and and this, it's a, just a great honor um, and, and certainly President Benson, when he was a dean at Virginia Tech and, and gave me so much support, especially during the darkest time of my career. So it, it's just, uh, you know, it's humbling to have him um, in the audience. Um, and uh, next slide. Uh, and, and so it's, it's certainly, a, a, you know, Grace Hopper is a, is a um, icon in our field. Um, uh, a filmmaker, Melissa Pierce, uh, made a movie about her and in her talk, in Melissa's talk, she mentioned uh, Grace Hopper is really good at being in the system and improve the system. And, and this is really something that I also try to do. And you know, I want to um, you know, think about things that we can make the future better. Next slide. Um, and so this is a topic that Bhavani encouraged me to intertwine my a technical work with the the discussion of imposter syndrome, and and so you you, you will see it's, it's all you know come together. Hopefully, it makes sense. Um, my research is in cybersecurity, and and this is just to give me a chance to to look at look back the, at the history. Um, the the landscaping of cyber attacks uh, um, it keep evolving. In the uh, earlier days, it was the simply faced the teenagers, the facing websites, the trying to show this is possible. Um, and, and later on, it's people and hackers realize that they can make money out of the attacks. And in recent years, you see ransom hacks, supply chain hacks, um, the, the, the cyber physical, you know, pipeline hacks. Um, and, and so it's just the scale has grown so much. And you see a lot of nation states hacks, and it's, it's a, a lot of times it's a cyber warfare. Um, and a lot of technology was turned into a cyber weapon. And, and back then, and back in the 80s, uh, it was cut off at the bottom, but then Barbara Fraser mentioned that she was a, a formal ACM of, of one of the uh, association, association of Computing Machinery um, Officer. She said that back then, cybersecurity uh, was like a day at the beach. It, it, there was only like a handful of computers connected to the internet. If something goes down, something went down, you're like, oh, I, I know the folks at the Purdue University. I can just give them a call. And, and nowadays, it's beach day no more. Next slide. And in, in fact, when you go to the beach, the, that's where hackers started attacking. 
um, this rival attack, it's a uh, supply chain attack. Virginia Tech was also one of the victims. Um, and it happened during the, the Independence Day last year. Um, and so, so you, you see a lot of government warnings before holidays, Labor Day, Thanksgiving. They, they tell organizations to be um, high alert. Um, in, in the, the cyber criminals knows that you're you're um, you're off, um, and so so it's it's it, it keep changing. Next slide. And and then personally, I I just I was drawn to the the data breach because I was personally experienced so many times, and later on I stopped tracking. Um, next slide. If you can remember anything, one thing from this talk in the cybersecurity. Uh, aspect back up. That's the one thing that I really want you to remember. Always have a plan. Always back your data up. If you back it up, you don't have to pay the ransom. Because um, sometimes the criminals will not. Yes. Uh, next slide. If you pay ransom, half of the time that you won't get the data back, which is really unfortunate. You know, you are dealing with several criminals. So what do you expect? Um, and but then this is just a very fascinating concept, you know, and, and it's just a hugely impactful. Um, in even small town government knows that they need to do something on cybersecurity. Um, and so a lot of times that you you see the literature, the research, you don't you don't see a lot of researchers working on this topic. And so I was just naturally drawn to this. Um, it, it, it has so much real world relevance. Next slide. And so, but then, but then how is this related to being yourself, understand yourself? And the, the, you have to understand the research, you cannot completely detach you from the technical work. You, you have to understand who you are. Um, and, and, and lots of times, so as uh, this is my current uh, students, undergrad and graduate student I'm working with, lots of times that I'm trying to analyze that I see they have Sometimes some students became just completely panicky when I ask them questions, and so I help them understand why. Why do you, you know, why you all of a sudden became so defensive, and what what could we do? And and so understand yourself is very much part of the research of your career, um, and so it's all intertwined. Next. Um, and so when when you think of you. If you look at the research, this is really a very luxurious activity. This is like think of like Gucci, LB. Those are the the luxurious activities on top of eating, you know, exercising, you know, commuting and, and sleeping. And so so once you have all these taken care of, you're like, oh, what else can I do? Maybe I can make some progress in the technical world. Um, but then when you do research, you know, you look, you look at a lot of the top researchers. Um, the stars ha really have to align to get any research done. In, in the, the professors and, and the students have to work together. They have to trust each other's judgment. The deans, the, the department head, the president has to really value research. The funding agencies need to have faith in the PIs, in the principal investigator. And the paper reviewers also have to trust the, the, the anonymous authors. Um, and so this is has to all work out. It's difficult. It's really difficult. Um, if, if if you know for for a long time that I I think I perform at at my top performance, but but then really I I was I could be a lot better. I could have been really a lot better. Um, and understanding myself really helped. Next. Um, so uh, interestingly, I read an article where Jessica Alba said that she had imposter syndrome. At that time, I was like, who cares? I mean, she was an actress. She's an actress. Now she's a brilliant businesswoman. And so, but I was vividly remember thinking that I, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm, I'm true to myself. Um, so, uh, but, but she said that for a long time, she felt like you know, she didn't belong. She was just perceived as um, not being talented, and then she didn't trust herself. Um, and so, but but then this this term that was the first time I learned about it. Next. And and so so what is imposter syndrome? And and this is the, the from the psychological aspect, people say this is not a mental disease. Um, but it, but it's it's a phenomenon. It's 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 bet, a better word should be self depreciation. Uh, where you think that you didn't 
um, you are not good enough. Um, and, 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 and sometimes you are afraid that the people will expose you as a fraud, um, that you, your, form, your previous achievement is all because of luck or because people like you, because you are adorable, it is whatever reason, and, and that you didn't, it didn't do anything. Um, and there's no pills for it. Next. And, and why this is this is so bad for research and, or, or any career? You know, it doesn't matter what career you're, you're doing and because any career require persistence, is require longevity, require you invest, you know, people say 100,000 hours rule, require you to invest uh, a, a long time and you, and you have to keep getting better and better. Um, and so, so imposter syndrome would push you to quit. Next. And and I was I was one of I was I almost to quit but in a way that I I just almost feel like okay there's no point in going forward and and so looking back I I noticed that there's a lot of um you, know, you everyone would experience failures um and sometimes it's because your your weakness your mistakes um sometimes it's because the system is not fair or the system is not completely unbiased. Um, and the, but then the problem is that how can you handle failures? Um, are you wanting to keep fighting, keep improving yourself, and, and keep trying, or you feel defeated? Um, and in the last time, people say, "Oh, you know, uh, you certain so and so is optimistic, and, and, and so and so is just a pessimistic." But but then just understand um, what makes um, you you what make people think certain in certain way um and so so yes this is the, this is um the apartment in the sunny san diego where i did a sabbatical with my husband and and chang lu um, um president benson also um uh, knows him um so he he is he's, he's in uh he's professor in the chemical engineering department and our, our daughter the three of us moved to to california for half a year so you see the ocean and far away, and it's just a beautiful and across the highway. That's the University of uh, UC uh, San Diego. And so, so that this is I, I just I had it. It was beautiful time, and and I didn't do much. I I think I I submitted a couple proposals, um, and I was I was really burned out. I got tenured. I was really burned out. Um, and so it's supposed to be like a rejuvenation, refreshing, energized phase. But I had the biggest meltdown of my life. Next. Thanks to, to Google Map, I can pinpoint the, the exact location of, of my meltdown. And, and this is the wall, you know, behind the wall, this is the public restroom. This is a, a, a park next to our uh, apartment. And my daughter was playing um, a handball against the wall and she was, um, I think nine or ten, um, and so I was I was just staring on the ground and I look at the, the shade, shades um, on the ground and then I, I thought I was a, a complete failure. I, you know, I, I didn't I, as a researcher I didn't do much. I, I wasn't, you know, I was I was just not making a lot of contribution to the society and, and that that just uh, so vivid. Of course, it was six years ago. It's, um, but but then whenever I, I talk about this, I feel it, it was so scary. It was just really scary, and I thought about maybe I should just, um, you know, just uh, maybe, you know, just became um, it, it's stay at home or or, or something. Just to, you know, I it, that was that was you know it would become really real. Next slide. And, and so interestingly, um, looking back. It was it was just it didn't make sense what I felt because I had so many awards already back then and then so many fancy degrees and also patents um, and, and just a lot of inventions and I like to invent and but then I never really gave label myself as you know as as a being creative um, but now looking back I, I know it, it's it's just there's no doubt I I I would just. Um, like Bhavani said, I am brilliant and I now truly believe that. But at that time I was just, you know, horrible. I, I didn't do anything. Um, and I was uh, comparing in my mind uh, against so and so, you know, this person. And I was like everywhere I compare, I was, I felt short. Um, and, and of course, you know, I, you know, people don't really talk about this. And even to this day, you know, when I talk about this and there was uh, other folks who, who really think of, 
um, care care a lot about me and, and say Daphne, you know, just uh, you have to be careful for sharing this information. But I do want to. I want. I want to. Uh, you know, I, I already overcame that that um, imposter syndrome, and, and I want to show you that it's actually very serious condition. Next. And it's also very common, you know. It, I after I shared um, um, my article, my talks, a lot of people uh, approach me, and some some are, you know, uh, men, some are white, and, and and they say that I have this problem. And so, it's, I you know I have really in, interested um, in data leak prevention. I had papers, and and those papers now years later are, are highly viewed, highly downloaded, um, and, and, and so in some of them are, are um, cited in, in, by industry patents. Um, and so one of the work I did is a data leak detection as a service where you can outsource your data leak solution to the cloud. Um, I also wrote an article on targeted data breach describing what happened, the technical issues uh, occurred, and then the technical solutions, the possible preventions. And target, this is a 2013 data breach, um, has 400, 40 million credit card information lost and then 70 million data um, uh, stolen during the holiday season of 2013. Um, it, was, it was really a, a complex um, uh, a, a breach started from an uh, air conditioning company. Um, and so, so that article was actually also cited by a political science book. And, and so there wasn't, a, there, was, there was very, very little research papers describing what happened in those um, big high profile data breach incidents and was very interested in those. Um, next. But, but then I stopped doing it and, I, and because those papers really, I think we, we had some difficulty publishing and, um, and I wouldn't say it's above, um, it, was, it, was, it was actually quite expected, I think, you know, but, but I, I didn't keep that thread of research until much later. And so, so um, later on when I overcame my imposter syndrome, I, I pick, it up, pick it up and resume that um, uh, a line of research and which I really enjoy and, and, and now I have been given keynote speeches on data leak prevention in a lot of times to chief information security officers. Um, so I will, I will talk a little bit more on that later. Um, and so one of the interesting thing is that I cannot, when I, when I had my problem, I, I had, I look really stupid during interviews. Um, and, and, and so uh, I, I, and I keep thinking, why is that? Next. And years later, I, I realized that there's this thing in your brain called the amygdala. <laughs> and this is a very small, very small um, uh, brain portion, which is control your emotion, your, um, your, um, uh, uh, the you know you're, if you are happy or you're you're angry and this is really because of the amygdala and but then the the main logical thinking part of your brain is a higher cortex uh, um, this is really the the result of the years and, and millions of years years of evolution but then if you are angry your amygdala gets activated it will disable higher cortex if you can advance to the the um, the animation, right? So, so when when I get uh, spooks, uh, which is very often during <laughs> job, you know, this sort of TV station interviews and, and so on, new, news reporter interviews, uh, like the higher part of my brain is not working. <laughs> um, and so, so nowadays, I when I overcome the problem, it's a lot better. I, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I attended a live. A session, a panel organized by this platform called the, the Intellectual in China, and we had uh, over twenty thousand viewers. Over twenty thousand viewers, and and I did brilliantly. <laughs> so, um, so this just shows how how important. And there are other folks who have um, said that they also have imposter syndrome. It's it's pretty pretty common um, in in men and women. Next. So, so you know, and I ask why. You know, of course, in America, we say apples don't fall far from their tree, um, and 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 you use this phrase to blame on your parents on anything that you are not good at. But then I wonder, uh, you know, why? It's just that the society also um, has a, um, a hand on it. Next. 
And so a lot of times what I observed is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, uh, yes. So what and then this is just a very vicious cycle that I've, I've seen a lot of my friends uh, who we you know, started at the same career at the same time. I don't see them very often. Um, um, and it, it's just a lot of times that people quit and, and they don't they don't quit their job, but then they just uh, gradually they feel like so you understand and the lack of motivation um, and, and a lot of time that you know the signal saying that you don't belong you are different and including sexual harassment I had students uh, coming to me because of sexual harassment by um, uh, others and and then she end up quitting uh, grad school um, and so a lot of time that and then students um, would say oh I actually I'm not good at this uh, you know computer science it's 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 my fault, but then but then you know you don't know is it your fault or because of the sexual harassment because of the the, the society the issues um and so you never know. And and I want to say a little bit about this smiling for a long time that the people you know the people who really cared about me and they said that Daphne you smile too much you know because you look. It doesn't look like a professor, and and I I was I was like you know it was really frustrating, and and nowadays um I I you know I have family members who think that I smell too little, <laughs> so so I made this uh, meme um just to say that I you know <laughs> I I I just want to be whatever I want to be, um self doubt is very dangerous um in in if. And it's just very silent. It silently kills your passion. Um, next. And we all know that everything needs persistence, uh, especially science and science research, um, career development. Um, it, you know, in, it, it, you just you just don't quit. And, and then you, you, in, and then where 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 do you get the energy? Uh, for not quitting. If he, all you see are negative, and and then it's going to be difficult. Um, and so so, but but then but then you know, sometimes you see that you know people quitting career. They're like, oh, you know, they they are just a weak. They are incompetent. And that's why they quit. Is, is that so, or is it there's something else that make them them quit? Um, and a lot of time that people quit, they don't tell you. You know. Um, it, it, they they would just blame on themselves, internalize all their failures. Um, next, and so so I, I I want to use this example, Crypto Guard. Crypto Guard is a, a, a technology that we developed in our group. That is a code scanning. We we scan code, millions of lines of code to look for cryptographic misuses, uh, you know, um, insecure code. And and we are really proud that this tool has very high precision, meaning that it has very low false positive, very low false alerts. And, and we use this tool to uh, identify industry um, uh, commercial projects and to find uh, mis misuses and then notify them hard on their project. The tool is also integrated into an Oracle Labs internal code scanning tool framework called Parfait. Um, and so, so, you know, it's, it's just a has been very successful in in and we've been working on it for multiple years. Um, and, and so so this is the uh, next slide. And I started, I conceived this crypto guard idea during the height of my imposter syndrome. You know, when I was in San Diego, there was a conference there. So I attended, I heard a, a keynote speech that talks about the crypto code implementation, you know, like for algorithm that people understand perfectly on paper. But then when they code it for real, there, there's issues. And so, um, so I thought, that, you know, why don't you just have some ways to check the code? Um, and so that was six years ago. Next. And, and then I cannot tell you how many rejections we, we, we got, you know, for the for the main paper. And um, most of the rejection is like, you know, oh, you, you find out uh, there are misuses, but we already know there are misuses. And so there's no need to have some industrial strength detection because we already know those tools are are insecure. Um, those those code is insecure. Um, and but but then 
but then there's no industry you know, deployable solution. That's that's really our main contribution. We have a solution that people can use in the real world. Um, and the one of, as a matter of fact, can we go back to the previous slide? One of the one of the criticism I also just pointed out is that uh, someone some reviewer I, I think this this is really a very novel rejection or uh, reason is that your work is too rigorous. Okay, um, and and so and you know when you see this, my students are like, oh, what's going on? And and so as a as a advisor, you have to be strong. You have to really want it, want to to fight, uh, as opposed to just oh, let, let's just give up and then let's just wrap it up and then move on to something else. And so so it was really tough for the entire team, but at the PI, at the advisor, um, that it, it's just. If if I didn't overcome imposter syndrome, I, I would probably prematurely exit this this technology. Um, and next, and and so so and luckily that we keep fighting, we keep submitting, and then we keep doing better and better. We we publish multiple papers, and and we have a bigger team. Uh, we also find a lot of friends who really recognize the value of this, and the students find jobs. Uh, professors at the University of Arizona, you know, um, um, uh, get reported on our technology, get fellowship. So we per persevered, and it's a, it absolutely rewarding. Um, it, it was a hard, but then, but then it's very rewarding. Next slide. And, and I also want to emphasize whenever you get rejected, whenever there's, you are treated unfairly, that you think um, that you will be able to find friends, that you are able to say that, oh, maybe the reviewers, our community should change the way they, they see the work. Maybe they should incorporate more deployable uh, cybersecurity research, and that's exactly what happened. I became the steering committee chair of Secure Development Conference, which exactly fostered this kind of research, and then other journals, and other conferences, and, and, and you know, student dissertations. Um, and so, so I, I end up making a lot of friends. And so this, um, this. You know, being able to to continue the things that I really enjoyed and I think are important, and and then believing in yourself that even though despite all these criticism, that you I truly believe that we had something really original, really important, um, and and then we carried it through it, and it was it was um, tough, but then afterwards we end up become a leader in this field. Next, um, and so. So in cybersecurity, um, you know, everyone knows that it's impossible to achieve perfect security. And by the same token, I want to say that it's also impossible to please everyone. And, and so just to expect there will be criticism. My daughter likes to sing. Um, when she sings, and I told her, you, you know, I, and I uploaded a lot of her singing recordings on YouTube. I told her, don't look at the comments. You know, there will be people who laugh at you, who, who, who you know, think that you look stupid. But don't look at it. You know, you, you, you're just brilliant. You, you know it, and keep doing what you like. Next. Um, I also, after I overcame, overcame imposter syndrome, I also picked up data breach research and and it could, because of that I noticed that this is just so important um, and I also get an encouragement from uh, folks like Bavani, um, um, uh, Elisa Bertino and Ravi Sandu from our community, a lot of senior researchers. Uh, I gave a keynote speech at a conference um, and I received just extreme um, you know, support, it's just a, in, lots of encouragement. And so, one of the work that we look at is this payment card industry. In, for whatever, all the machines that take credit cards, they have to follow certain data security standard. And, and basically, it says that for all the machines, they have to uh, experience a little. Uh, they have to go through the scanning. The scanning happens every quarterly. Large or small vendors, merchant doesn't matter. They have to go through this scanning. And so, so I wonder how good are these scanners? Can we measure the scanners? Next. 
And so long story short that we set up a test bed, we um, um, tested a, a bunch of commercial scanners and those scanners, they charge, some charge thousands of dollars so for, for, you know, like a yearly scan, some charge hundreds. And so these commercial scanners, we, we, you know, interestingly, we find out a lot of them are certifying vulnerable uh, websites, e-commerce websites. They, um, the, the scanners, they um, would allow uh, vulnerability to exist on this website, even though they detect it, they say, oh, you, you don't have to fix those, so we can still certify you as being compatible with the standard. As a result, a lot of the, the e-commerce website that takes credit cards are not PCI compliant. Um, and so, so we disclose this findings with the PCI Security Council, and then we let them know that the specification is extremely comprehensive, but the enforcement is really tough and need to be improved. And this also shows that the researchers need to help the industry, need to help the, the, the financial industry to enforce the, the data security standards. And lots of times that it's very difficult um, to, to, to be complete in the scanning. Um, and so, so, you know, my, my research in data security almost became an uh, activism um, after I, uh, after the, the Aquifax data breach, which happened in 2017. Um, and the, the, you know, the more I look at this, the, the just really frustrating I, I felt it's um, the data, the Aquifax data breach lost half of U.S. population's uh, sensitive information. And so, so it's just the biggest, the grandest of all data breaches. Um, but then, if you look closer, in lots of times that people think, oh, you know, you can, you, you can never prevent this. You just said it yourself. You know, it's impossible to achieve cybersecurity, to achieve security. But then, Equifax that it made a huge mistake, many mistakes, and they never really paid attention on their their uh, systems even though they know they're, they're sitting on this trove of sensitive data. It took them uh, 146 days to patch. And usually when people say that you should patch within 30 days. Um, and, it, and, and then they have vulnerability, very common vulnerability cross site. It's very well known vulnerabilities. And they have it on their website. Um, they use predictable pins for when you freeze your account earlier in the earlier days after the, the data breach, and you, you may have remembered that the, you know, the news will say, oh, you know, you're worried, just uh, freeze your account. So people cannot apply a mortgage on your name. Um, but, but then the freeze pin uh, was a, a predictable timestamp. Um, and, and so that, that wasn't safe. Um, then later on, they change it. In the, in the South America Equifax office, the admin admin login, the username password was used. It's like the default password was used um, um, for their employee portal. Um, and so, so um, and there was also a government accountability office, GAO office report describing just multi years of um, negligence and uh, um, uh, on cybersecurity by Equifax executives. A lot of the executives didn't apply, didn't attend meetings and, and just, and, and then, you know, a lot of the updates were based on trust and they say, oh, we, we trust the, the administrator. They, they will do a good job. They, they, will, they will patch. Um, we don't, and then they didn't have, um, even though the Apache stress vulnerability came out and they didn't know where to patch because they didn't have an asset inventory. They didn't know who is running what machines. And, and so, it might be okay if the, you use a computer for online gaming, but it's certainly not okay if it's a work computers for half of U.S. population's credit information. Okay, um, and so so next slide. So so now I truly really believe you know now you know data breach prevention is a, a main research thrust. Uh, I in and I you know. Um, have been doing a lot of keynotes, and, and, and I truly believe that the world really needs experts like me. And, and this is really the why we want to everyone. We want everyone to overcome imposter syndrome because the you know you being humble or you know self depreciation it doesn't help anyone. <laughs> and and the, there's you see I see a lot of things that other people don't see. Um, and, and that prompted me to do 
research on deployable security on data breach prevention that that um, that is just uh, so immensely uh, important. And so um, if I still it had the imposter syndrome, it would be a lot harder. Um, so a lot of on my, on my YouTube channel, I have my keynotes on this topic. Um, we also have a lot of easy to understand videos made on this topic uh, besides you know addition you know the the sort of the technical work that we look at different ways to prevent data breach uh, but then I, I you know i realized a lot of the the pub, general public didn't understand what's going on and, and people when i talked with them they were like oh this is so scary it's not scary if you know that the you know aquifax made so many mistakes um, in their organization, um, in, in the, and then there are so many technologies that they could have adopted to, to reduce their risk. I don't expect them to say zero, zero risk. It's not very obvious mistakes. And so, so this is all, you know, ties back to me overcoming my imposter syndrome and then believing in my in my intuition. And and so, so now, how to cope with the imposter syndrome and, and and, and this is, of course, the, the most important thing. Um, and, and I can tell you that you can completely overcome it. Next. So celebration, you know, so it's so easy, right? Celebration, you know, recognize your strengths. Um, last time I looking back, I didn't celebrate much. I, I, I feel I not celebrate enough, not, not recognizing my strengths enough. Um, and, and I see, you know, I have people telling me, oh, you are good at this, you are good at that, but, but I don't, I didn't tell myself. Um, so, so next, what I want you to do, um, and, and regardless whether you have imposter syndrome or not, tell yourself, identify your, your strengths, identify your strengths as a human being, identify your strengths in your career. Um, and, and then let that strength shine, you know, find a, a task that would capitalize your strengths. And then you keep repeating. Last time that I tell my students very explicitly, I say, you, you, so and so, you are really good at approaching new problem. You are really good at identifying multiple approaches, um, find, uh, you know, uh, evaluating a, a, a very new area. And, and so I, you know, I tell them very explicitly, a lot, a lot of my students said that, oh, you know, I have to record what you, I really want to record what you said so that I, you know, every day in the morning I play it back to me. And because a lot of times that, you know, in our, in our world, in the research world, people don't necessarily have those kind of compliments. Um, and, and, and also it's take, it, you have to really understand the person. Um, in order to identify the specific research strengths. Um, and so, so it, it, it's a hard, it's hard for, for you or your advisor um, to be able to do that. But, but then please do, do this is so important. Um, and this is number one tip. The next one is also equally important is you have to work on your weaknesses and, and, and don't, don't fake it. I, I, you know, I, I think if you have certain weakness that you perceive as um, uh, a, a critical deficiency, um, then you have to work very hard to improve it. It's, it's absolutely um, that, you know, for example, in computer science, if you don't know coding or, or you just you hate, you hate coding, and th then, then probably that, that may not be the, the best. You, you, you at least have to know a little bit about coding. You don't have to do it 100%. Um, and and the, the weakness, if it's not a critical witness, I would say you don't have to do anything. Um, I, I'm telling you that there are so many times that I, when I organize conferences, I have speakers and say, oh, this is the first time I give my keynote speech. And I feel like this is, you, you don't have to disclose this. It's not very relevant. Um, and um, I, I, you just you know, people invited you, you are already good enough. Um, and so if it's, you know, not very relevant, you, you forget about it. Um, um, and if, if it's something you can delegate, you, you can absolutely delegate. And that's what, why we need a collaboration. Um, you don't have to do everything yourself. And so, so this is, you know, this is my algorithm, algorithm flowchart for how to handle weaknesses. 
um, because the last time that you know people with imposter syndrome seen, would, would would say everywhere I look I have deficiencies I have deficiencies in this I cannot do that and I don't have time for that and then they get more and more panic um, but you don't have to be um, and so self help has been um, the, the the main um, mitigation. Um, if you look at the, the past, you know, the, the, the imposter syndrome was, was uh, reported back in the 70s and people are like self help, self help, you know, find a support group. But then also think about what you really need to have a support system. So you, you know, you, you need to really understand that the, the system that we have is not perfect. Um, and you have to create a better support system. Um, a guy, um, a former a software engineer emailed me. I didn't know him and he was, he's from Philadelphia area. He, he said that he quit his job and he was like in the, in the mid, mid age. Um, and, and this email is just so, um, yeah, it just broke my heart. And, and he, he said that, you know, after reading my article, he made a peace with himself. Um, because he had, he quit his job and, and he blamed um, his failures all on himself. Um, and it was very toxic self-sabotage. It, it was just, um, but I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, he read my article and, and then, you know, um, knew that the, the, the system absolutely mattered. Um, and the last time that I don't think it's only happened to women or, you know, women of color, it, it can happen to any one of you. Um, in, in so so support system is it, um, something that um, in, in you have to find and so so how to find it next slide and next one how how to how to find support system and then you have to be very conscious okay and and so you know I, I Bhavani is is a huge support of of me in over the years um and in their others more senior you know, equally senior folks in the cybersecurity community i i just feel tremendous um um in, in, in gratitude uh for them um it you, you need to people who have faith in you who who know that you will who you have potential, you know, President Benson, when he was, uh, you know, when I was experiencing really the darkest time of my career, uh, he he um, stood up for me, um, and and then it, it just, uh, you know, meant so much to me, um, and that that I think, you know, all these all these people believing in you um, would contribute to your support system. You you cannot say, oh, you know, I I just have to grow a thick skin. It's it's not sufficient. This is, you know, this this career is 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 challenging. Um, it's it, 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 any career is challenging. Um, you you have to really identify the people who have faith in you, um, and, and that will help you to have faith in yourself. Um, next, um, and this is really another algorithm. This is the algorithm uh, flowchart of a handle. Things like sexual harassment um, or microaggressions. You know, I, I had a family friend. You know, after a, like Lunar New Year celebration, everyone was really happy. <laughs> um, and and then so this 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 uh, gentleman approached me and, and say, oh, you know, uh, Daphne, you you are so successful. I only um, learned that you know recently that you're so. I was, I was very surprised because women usually suck at computer science. And, and so so it, you know this kind of thing saying yeah, I. I know that the, the person said it did, didn't really mean to hurt me, and, and I, it was actually a compliment. Um, but but then still, it's it's you know that it may have negative feelings, um, and and so a lot of times that the, our society is improving, um, and and everyone is learning because of the you know the the Asian history of uh, in the. The certain stereotypes, uh, understanding of women, and you know, my grandma on my father's side um, was illiterate, and and so is my my grandma on my mother's side, um, and uh, um, and one of them had their feet wrapped, and this is in ancient China that people don't didn't want women to 
travel, didn't want them to get out of their house very much. And so they, when the girl during their uh, teenage years and they wrap their feet and their feet become really small. And then I remember seeing um, my grandma's uh, feet and it was it must have been extremely uh, painful and and so 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 you have to understand that, that women have um, really come a long way um and and so so come down to this algorithm okay so i, I just want to point it out that if it's something that you know people are grabbing your legs or grabbing you know your body parts just to stand up and leave uh, my husband, uh, when I describe my the, the sexual harassment incidents, and now COVID is everything is virtual. It's actually that helped a whole lot. And before that, you know, it just one is one too many, right? So you remember all these thing kind of things, and and in the last time that you know you you just froze. And so so I would say stand up and, and leave, and you can do it. Um, next. And you have to understand it's very demoralizing. You know, it, it, you, you know, people ask, well, how, how is it to do with algorithm, with coding? With it's extremely demoralizing. Um, and 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 so um, and so I started. Um, and, and you know, and people may ask, okay, how, you, you cannot prove there's connections on your um, imposter syndrome and all the harassment. But then I'll say that you can you cannot prove it otherwise. Um, so I've written articles and, and so on, given a lot of talks on this topic. Um, and hope you know, there's also one in, in uh, Chinese. Um, next. Um, like Balani said that we've been um, uh, working together on this uh, diversity workshop. Uh, and we're really happy that I really hope that this year that we can hold, hold it in person in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Uh, and then in the last two years, so we've been ha ha having it virtually. It was just a very exhausting staring at a screen <laughs> for a whole day. Uh, next. Right, so so every year we uh, hope to ho host it uh, together with the ACM CCS. This is the biggest cybersecurity conference. Um, and, and, and the workshop was uh, funded by NSF. Um, uh, very excited. We have mentors uh, um, and also graduate students who are mentees, and, and we have a lot of career talks. Um, um, and this year, we plan to talk about how to write an effective rebuttal. Um, last year, we also talked about time management, um, really very useful topics. And so this is toward the end of my talk. I think we, I, I may still have a couple. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> the last. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much, Daphne. That was just wonderful talk. And you know, you talked about the technical aspects, uh, you know, some of the breakthrough research, and then tied it with your personal. I've got a lot of things to talk, but uh, let's ask the others. Who has questions? Dr. Benson, do you have any questions? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was just beginning to type a, a comment, but what what a deeply insightful presentation uh daphne that that was just stunning um you, you know I, I knew you at, a, at an early time in your career um you know by the way i i've only had one sabbatical in my life it was also to uc san diego oh yeah <laughs> a, a very long time ago but but it, it was a it was a wonderful year i got a lot done my first child was born during that year but oh, wow. i also went through a little bit of what you did um you know, I was in a different place. I had stepped away from my, you know, my career. I was still an associate professor. And and yeah. I, I was, you know, very deeply thinking about, you know, what should I be doing? You know, am I on the right path? You know, I, some people would call it a midlife crisis. I think in academia, we, we sort of have our own version of the midlife crisis. But, um, yeah. you know, what, what you've said really resonates with me. Um, not, you know, not just having known you at, you know, when I was dean, but but just thinking back in my own career when I was younger and, you know, your age and, you know, trying to achieve many of the same things. So, um, uh, as I say, just deeply insightful, you, you know, you are a wonderful mentor for others, not just your students, but for fellow faculty members, you know, because, you know, and even even faculty members more senior than you, you know, older than you. <laughs> Because again, you you've you so really thought deeply uh, about your career, you know, your intellect, what you can contribute, 
And um, I, I'm just so impressed. So just so thoroughly impressed. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for sharing your experience. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you Dr. So much for staying for the whole hour. Yeah, we are so honored, you know, and uh, to have both of you here. Uh, Dr. Desku, or we do, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Well, Bhavani, thank you for putting me to on the spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I put Dr. Benson yeah, on the spot. Good so, so first, I, I'm going to make a comment uh, about that name. I mean, you've been smiling a lot during this talk. <laughs> so I, I take that as a very good thing, considering what you were saying earlier when you started the talk. So this mm -hmm. means that you are feeling comfortable with us and you enjoy what, what you are doing here. So so that, that yeah. is great. Um, one of the questions I would have had uh, would have been to name someone that has helped you gain confidence mm -hmm. in this process. Yeah. You already named President Benson, but then maybe you you already yeah, named yeah. Bavani, but maybe you can name someone else, it's someone that, that helped you change that, direction that, and become. Yes, yes that, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, so there was, um, so so there was an opportunity um, um, that I went to visit uh, uh, another university. I was, I was recruited by another university, and during this uh, recruitment uh, interview, when um, lady when a professor a female professor she asked me she she said that daphne what should we do in the, you you are such an expert we are in need of this expertise and to build a, a cybersecurity program what should we do and that was the way that she asked me was so sincere that really snapped me immediately that was during the day of the at the beginning of the the interview and and that's just a immediately snapped me out of the imposter syndrome and i suddenly realized that oh wait a minute i actually have something that i can contribute i you know i'm i'm and, and so so that 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 question um and so so looking back you know I, I keep telling my student that we also need your expertise i we i um a lot of time that we 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 um you know at least i i before that, I, I felt like, oh, I was just completing my task. I'm a professor, I teach, I, you know, I publish paper, and those are my tasks. But then I can be a leader. Uh, I lead, I have, a, you know, more initiatives. And so that really changed my position, and, you know, less passive, more proactive. So uh, I'd like to add something. So Daphne and I have been having a lot of discussions on this, um, you know, so so one of the things so i've said i told daphne so it looks like i have the sort of the opposite so i was trying to say <laughs> no no so uh i was thinking but maybe you know i have sort of the opposite problem right <laughs> i think i'm just the superb person i mean that's a problem too i right? I, I think i think I mean, uh, this the today today I, I thought of Bavani uh, because I I think I'm now is like you now and and uh, I think I really like it I I don't think this is a problem <laughs> I think being confident is really a good thing and then knowing your strengths and 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 so that yeah I I, I think you know, for people who don't have imposter syndrome and just to be happy and and then you know utilize that it, it's just to our fullest extent. But but I want to add was after talking to Daphne and having these discussions. I'm now much more aware in the sense those days if I don't get something on an award or whatever, I mean, I'm the best. Why didn't I get it? See, that's <laughs> the, but now I think I'm much more realistic, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But one has to be realistic. Okay, mm -hmm. so a lot of other questions. I've got some more technical questions, but uh, there's so many people. So there's, oh. We do have uh, a Karen here with a hand up. Karen, yeah. please go ahead, Mazi. Hi, Daphne. Really enjoyed your talk very much. Hi. Um, just kind of a side note, when you showed your your research group, mm -hmm. I happened to notice how beautifully diverse it was. Mm -hmm. Was that by choice, by accident? And what um, benefits do you see in research is having a diverse group? Mm. Well, a great, great question. Great question. Um, I, I it, it's it's 
it sort of naturally happened. Um, it naturally happened, and, and I think part of it is because I overcome imposter syndrome. I see strengths in a lot of students, and so I don't I don't see a lot of their certain you know their gender or race, and and I just I talk with them and and I evaluate their technical capabilities, and and that you know by that I see sort of beauties in everybody, uh, strengths in everybody, and and that that really. I sometimes I, I feel like, you know, I'm I, you know, like um, a lot of the it's like compared to my earlier group um, and it's a lot more diverse and it's, it's functioning perfectly um, in. Um, so 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 that that absolutely related to me overcoming imposter. So we have a, a question from Hasha, Hasha Koka. I think he's he's the next one, right? Oh, we do, yeah, Hasha, she, yeah, sorry. Yeah, your question. Please unmute. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, unmute. Okay. A beautiful talk. Uh, I really appreciate the point that you showed about celebrating your successes. Mm -hmm. I think that it, that celebrating the successes kind of reinforces uh, uh, a reinforcement to yourself that you have achieved it. You finished it. Uh, Absolutely. You out of it. Uh, and related to that, I. Like I, I have been talking about this with my husband. We both kind of discuss this uh, topic a lot and we realize that uh, men as in him and men in general uh, get to talk about their work a lot more in mm. in the family, in you know, when yeah. we meet friends, when we meet in-laws or when <laughs> yeah. you, to you talk about how's your work going and there's supposed to be an answer to that and you discuss your work and you 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 kind of repeat this. Re, re, uh, just talking about your work gives you more confidence in your work, and I, I, I have experienced this, and my friends have shared their experiences. That that is not what, as a woman, we get. We we don't discuss with our mother uh, our mm -hmm. work. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. With their father. Sure, sure. sure. Okay. Is that something uh, that you have experienced? Yeah. That? Yes. That that's exactly what I experienced. <laughs> Sometimes I have to tell my husband stop talking about your work, and and, and I I noticed that also um um that at the conference I mean it's what I think in in general it's it's just a difference you know the way that we we approach work um so later on I, I find out this um it's it's you have your own style. You know, a lot time, last time that that you would you would think, oh, I should I should also do what he does, and and, and, and but but then you have, um, for example, I sometimes I would not be able to um, say reply or directly you know confront a certain um, person at certain issues, but I will internalize it and then write a very long email, <laughs> and and then if they don't respond, I will write an email again and email again, and so I'm very persistent in that regard. And so 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 different people have different approaches, and you can reach the same um, result or same outcome. And so 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 don't worry. And I think I don't sort of when I see myself look differently when I when I give speech when I give a lecture, I, I look so different from other professors. Um, I don't feel sort of um yeah i don't i don't feel guilty like i don't feel like oh why am i so different you know i just am so silly so so stop feeling that you know because everyone um you, you know it's just met many different ways to uh be successful um and so so it, it's okay you know you, you don't talk about it i mean as long as you you put enough work in that in that time you, you will get the same same um uh, place thank you Oh, great question. Right. So, um, yeah, that, that that's really good. Uh, I'm learning a lot, Daphne, after my oh. interactions with you, right? Because for, for me, you know, I like to talk all about myself. So mm -hmm. it's just the opposite. So I've got to work on the other side. I, I also learned, so, Bhavani, really, I learned so much from Bhavani when I first started the, the Cyber W workshop. And Bhavani gave me so much recognition in you know, organizing the workshop. And that was in 2017, the year yeah. right after my sabbatical. Yeah, so Dr. Benson, that that uh, and what we do, that was in Dallas. Oh, that, that that's in Dallas. Yes, yes, yes right. Yeah. And, and and so that was. People. Yeah, and and I met and and so Bavani's support really gave me confidence and and knowing that and 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 just seeing Bavani, I I, I it just being so confident in um in in, in it's just a, you know I I. In the, 
sort of it, it, it I remember she she told there's a certain kind of thing it really pushed the boundary in terms of what a woman can or cannot do and and, and just gave a lot of uh, set up a great role models for young women and, and I think we need to have really um, lots of um, successful women in, in a very diverse way and, and so that you know and, and this is all um, it, it we, we should celebrate all different um, leaders. So I have a question Daphne about uh, more technical question about these data breaches right yeah what are some of the challenging what are some of the common things that you are finding I like to sort of look more because there are, again you got to be very proud because you are one of the very few women or maybe the only woman I've seen talk about these data breaches mm -hmm. there are people like SPAF who talk about it but yeah. not only that you've gone deep into it right in your research yeah. so can yeah. you discuss something about the, these data breaches and what are some of the common common aspects what should we we be concerned about yeah yeah so so one of the um in in, in the, so so there are a lot of things that uh, researchers typical researcher would have thought that it's already so, solved and then but then when we look at for example on websites um how do you know whether it doesn't, doesn't have vulnerabilities uh things like cross-site uh scripting and and it, it's exceedingly hard to com completely find all of them um, and, and because of JavaScript is very dynamic code. Um, and there's also aspect where um, that how do you test, for example, the um, how, how do you test the testers? The scanners that we tested are not very good. When I talk with the PCI Security Council, they, they said that they actually have test beds to test the scanner to to qualify them but but then the the scanners would after a, a certain trials they would guess a certain vulnerabilities in some, some pages and so so the, you know you need to have better testers better and more intelligent ways um and so um in in you know also how do you make sure that you have you don't have a lot of false positives and those kind of deployable questions um, and um, so, so you know, a, a, a lot of these, you know, defenses, uh, um, people really haven't um, looked. They, they, they have academic solutions, but then are they deployable? Um, and in a lot of companies, they invent their own small solutions, but they really don't have the state of the art. Um, and then they need help from researchers. And, and there's also, you know, certainly policy aspect. Um, should we hold the companies accountable? Um, those are beyond the technical solutions, but then the technical committee really should influence the policy makers, the decision makers, the you know federal trade commissions, um, and to to let to 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 uh, hold the companies uh, uh, accountable. Um, nowadays, uh, it's uh, we don't see a lot of that. Right, it's sort of like the car companies, right? They make a, a faulty the diesel, oh, yeah, yeah, the the defeat device, yeah. right? They will, they should get fined, you know, you know going to prison in some of the e European unions are, are charging some of the, the defeat device so manufacturers. So I also like to say something while well, Dr. Benson is here commending because because of Dr. Benson now we have a female provost and a female we have a female engineering dean right she's also African-American and then we have a female department head in our engineering school and associate deans and so on. So mm -hmm. I see a different sort of culture. Uh, I can see, and I was telling my husband about it too, then sort of earlier, it was all men. You know, when I first joined, like until Dr. Benson came, it was, I mean, things were going really well too at that time. They really brought the university up. I'm not saying criticizing them, but they really had a lot of good things, but it was all men. But after Dr. Benson came, we are seeing more and more women. And that's yeah. really important. Yeah. What do you say about that, Daphne? because you have looked into all these things it's immensely important to the the leaders the leaders because you know there is a society is improving it's improved very slowly and and a lot, lot oftentimes that the women really um don't have the same opportunity and so it's it's very hard for them to advance um and and so if if you don't have the support if you don't have the leaders so doing um, um this uh, uh, advancement then it's the natural natural occurrence may take a long, long time. Take a long, long time. So, are there sort of any other questions? So, uh, yeah. So, Dr. Benson says Barbara Ryder was the first female department head. Dr. Benson, that, you that's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so, when when I went there as dean, no woman had ever served as a department head um, in the College of Engineering, and uh, it was my privilege to hire 
the, the first three, including the first African American, who is now our dean, Stephanie Adams. Yes. Yes. And um, and and when I left, we had an additional three women serving as interim department heads, um, at least one of whom, you know, eventually took over um, the position. So Eileen Van Aken uh, in, yeah. in, in industrial engineering. So uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that part of you know my my time there at. Uh, at and, and you know, Dr. Yeah. Benson. So Dr. Adams uh, joined us. There was no female department head ever in the engineering school, I think, to my knowledge. OK, and there were also no associate deans, female associate deans in the engineering school. And so now we have, you know, multiple associates. So we, we really have to build that culture. So, you know, that's really important. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. And, and Barbara Ryder, my mentor, um, she um, she hired me twice, so once into Rutgers University, once into Virginia Tech. Um, yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I think it just profoundly changed my career trajectory. I, I just and, and that was, you know, moving to Virginia Tech it was the first time my husband and I uh, spent time together <laughs> as a family because we were living so far apart with him flying back and forth to, to look at our little daughter. Um, it's just, uh, oh, I, I think, um, in, in, and I, I, I think in, I, well, when I, looking back, when I, when I have imposter syndrome, when I interview, when I give talks, and lots of time, then when I answer questions, there was also um, issues, and, and so I think Barbara was, was able to see my, my potential, and, and so I really appreciate that. So there are a lot of comments in the chat where they're all saying, uh, that is great presentation. I mean, some of them have left also. They are saying lots of great things. Thanks so much. Thank Very you interesting so much. and inspiring. Uh, then this was a really great presentation. Thank you for sharing the inspirational experiences. So many more comments. So uh, yeah, uh, what we do, do you have anything? Yeah. Yes, because uh, I mean, we probably don't want to keep them here too, too long and uh, everyone else. I would like to also acknowledge the other organizers of this uh, great series. So we have here uh, uh, Meha and we have here Karin Mazidi that uh, yeah. already uh, asked you questions. And I mean, they have been uh, behind this effort. We also have, uh, have uh, Anjum Chida, that's also part of it. So we have a, a great body of female faculty, both tenured, tenure type faculty and non tenure type faculty like Meha, Karen, and, and, and Anjum, that and Pushpa before them. Pushpa has also been here. She was one of the faculty, non tenure type faculty that originated the series, and they did an excellent. An excellent job. Uh, the series started about uh, almost 10 years ago now, and yeah. we had a group of, of uh, amazing speakers, now you included. You did mention that you visited Dallas in 2017, maybe not UT Dallas. I do think that is worth coming here and visiting UTD yeah, and seeing to, yes. Dallas again and seeing this area again because. As I'm sure that uh, President Benson can tell you now, this is an amazing place to be, actually. Yeah. Quite different yeah. from how it is at Virginia Tech. So at some point in time, you should just come and you know, have a visit here and give one of the I regular will. technical talks. Technical talks, I agree, really, talks. yeah. So I just want I to read over you some things. Sherry Chinyavsky, just this is not a question, but I just wanted to say that seeing a significant and successful figure such as yourself talk and open up about your weekend about their weak and low moments really adds confidence and enforces the idea that it's all right to go through this as long as we know that there is a way out. Mm -hmm. And then um, yes. Oluandra Grace, she says, also not a question, but I did want to say I enjoy listening to your story and found it deeply inspiring. Thank you for um, yes for sharing with us and wonderful. So many, many other. Will the slides be available? Uh, I, uh, Karen, yeah. we have to decide uh, about the slides, right? Recording uh, is available and the yes. slides, I don't know, you want to post it, right? And Michelle right. will be writing a story about this. Uh, let's see, anything else? Pushpa says very inspirational. And then Dr. Benson's comments, thank you so much. Like, yeah, a lot of folks have said great things, yeah. So, so or we do what, anything else you want to say? And that's all on my path for now. I think I said what I wanted to say. It was a pleasure again. Thank you so much. For yes, that. and we have to thank, thank so everyone thank in our team too. Uh, you know, uh, Mera and Karen, and also we have Norma 
who organized did so much work and put all these uh, things together. And mm -hmm. so I think we, we all need to give Daphne a hand. I need to figure out how to do the clapping bit now. Thank you so much. Uh, and yeah. we, and we appreciate all your time and, and yeah. the opportunity. Thank you so much, Daphne. And then we, yeah, we've been touching. Hopefully, we can see each other in Los Angeles. I'll come for okay. ACM, the high mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, uh, our President thank Benson. You so much, I really Benson. appreciate your and, time. Good thing. Thank you, you Dr. Dice, for giving us this opportunity to give this, uh, to host this series. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Great. Thank you. All right. Bye. Yeah. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.